Nineteen and a half pound. Who are uh, hopefully in on the game as well. And um, where we go. It's just that's my horse. That one behind you. May I ask you how long you've been with the hunt? Nearly ten years. And uh, what is it? Why is it you go out with the hunt? Do you get out with it yourself? What a great company. Very natural uh, process in the countryside. Um, pleasure to be in the countryside where one otherwise couldn't be. And of course, the relationship with the horse, which is very special. If you're lucky enough to have a nice horse. And uh, you can go through lots of horses before you find a nice one. I've been lucky this time. Okay, Brian. Yep, I'll do that a little bit. Maybe. All right. Come on, buddy. I come from an old hunting family. My grandfather hunted the Dartmoor fox out. And father hunted in Ireland with the Kilkenny and the Culatin in Ireland. And the master was Captain Isaac Bell, Ikey Bell, as he was known. Ikey, he used to cheer his hands on, yee, I, 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 a wonderful life, a lovely life. You can't beat hunting. What makes you sort of come out and follow the hunt? Would you, would you get out of it yourself? Just... What a lovely morning, eh? Eh? I've been out when it's snowing and raining, everything. It's just a way of life with me. Me? I've always, when we was little laddies, we've always had carriers and whippets and things like that. I wouldn't have got married if it weren't for the mix of the toasties killing all the rabbits. <laughs> Did he put that down? I expect so, yeah. I'm Kenneth Hill and I live around here, about a mile away from the meat. And I'd love them to catch a fox today as I lost one of my cockerels yesterday. I'd be damn pleased if they got the fox. They're very pretty to look at on postcards, but I don't know, I think they're really cruel creatures. Don't go crazy up the other yellow yard. 
Hi, uh, my name's Grant Tillman. I'm a member of the East Kent Hunt Saboteurs. And uh, what is it your group does? Our group, along with uh, other groups which have been in existence in this country for the last 40 years, uh, take non-violent direct action to save hunted foxes, hunted hares, hunted minks, and in the past even hunted stags. Okay, the huntsman, you can see the, the, the field, which means all the riders have come in through here, gone up into that wood there, the field will be kept to one side, the huntsman will be in there with his hounds now, which he'll be casting, which means spread them across. They'll be coming down through the wood. If there's a fox in there, it will, it will come out towards us because the wind's coming this way and it runs with the wind, obviously, because of its scent. Um, if that happens, sometimes they don't see it, but the ways that we can intervene is, say if it went that way, we'd run across there, spray citronella spray along the line of the fox because the, the foxhounds um, hunt by scent, not by sight. So once you've destroyed that line, the foxhounds will stop. We can then rate them, which means we use the same calls as the huntsman does, or we crack whips like that. And uh, use voice calls and the hounds will then go back to the huntsman. Yeah, the, um, the thing that the chap's got on his back, the um, megaphone, is connected to a tape player and on that is a recording of hounds in cry, which is the, the sound they make when they're on the line of a fox, which means they're chasing a fox. Put that on, it would play obviously very, very loud. The hounds stop and they think that there's other hounds over here, so then they run back towards us and we would then run up that way. All right, all right then. We're on private property, will you please leave? <laughs> Uh, specific arguments for banning fox hunting is uh, it is not a form of pest control. I mean, it is up for a lot of debate whether foxes are indeed pests. Um, it's it, it basically like times when the foot and mouth outbreak, um, the number of foxes did not increase when hunting was banned. Um, uh, hunts now openly admit that they get, well, they said they only used them in the past, they use artificial earths to artificially breed foxes. In the past, um, when there was no legislation about this whatsoever, hunts, in fact, this hunt, the East Kent hunt on their own website, speaks of in the past when they used to import foxes from France because they didn't actually have enough to kill. They'd killed so many that the, the, the natural number of foxes could no longer reproduce to the extent of what they were killing them. Um, it, is, it is purely done, the hounds are bred to hunt the fox slowly, it is purely done for entertainment, has been done for hundreds of years, it was there to replace stag hunting and that's what it is, it's purely an equestrian sport which involves the killing of a wild animal and a good chase. Think, go fox hunting? I think two types. Very simply, 
first type. The people that come out on events like this go to their barbecue, listen to the music, like looking at the horses, no problem with that whatsoever. And obviously the riders, the majority of the riders really don't understand what the hunt is about, never see a kill. The other type are the terrier men, the huntsmen, the whipper in, people of that nature. These people do seem to actually enjoy killing animals. Um, when they made badger digging, badger killing illegal in order to protect the endangered species, what happened was they carried on doing it. Now a lot of hunt terrier men have been sent to prison for killing badgers. Um, and if they can't stop their own barbaric urges, then someone has to stop it for them. I think it's a very, very silly class attitude thing. I think, I think there are a very, very small percentage of the antis are genuine animal lovers. And I think the rest of them are obsessed by some class sort of thoughts about the whole thing. And when I was Secretary of the Hunt, I used to know what everybody did. And you had whole stratas of people who came out hunting. They were from people who were Harley Street surgeons, brilliant men, uh, lawyers from London. And then you had very, very ordinary people, just like myself. Unfortunately, they're, they're not rarely interested in the welfare of the fox, they're more interested in um, being people haters. They, they dislike a certain section of society, which we fit apparently, which they sort of envisage we fit, and they just dislike us, and they spend more time taunting the foot followers and being rude and unpleasant. We had smash windscreens, we've had unpleasant phone calls at home, we've had all sorts of nasty things happening. And I think Fiona would agree with me. Yes, I would agree. We will never surrender, he said. We will fight on the beaches, on the land. If necessary in bed, we will never surrender. Where's the home? Really clever trying to call the house to the road, isn't it? Not calling to the road. Yeah, get him off the dig. any kind of aspect of your protesting which is relies on intimidation from your kind of uh, intimidation or, or group of you perhaps um, no that's not the idea whatsoever to intimidate these people all we want to do is stop them hunting if we want to intimidate them we'd obviously um, go to their houses and things like that we're not remotely interested where these people live what they do as long as we stop them hunting that is all we're concerned about once that is seen to be enforced by the law then they can start drag hunting properly and we can do other things at weekends apart from spending our days off from work doing things like this and risking a lot of physical violence towards us. Um, I've read sort of stories in the news, not necessarily your group or, um, or any local group, but um, violence or extreme methods used by protesters towards um, sabotaging fox hunting or, or towards fox supporters. What would your uh, viewpoints be on that? Sorry, what was that? Um, sort of extreme methods, but such as like um, car bombs perhaps or, or fireworks, that kind of thing which could cause physical harm to people. What would um, your viewpoints we, be on, I mean, on kind of been, extreme process? No, I'm not saying that you necessarily, yeah. your group would be. But yeah. I mean, we've been maligned and accused of so many things over the years, but what you've got to remember is that on our side, two hunt saboteurs have been killed. Mike, uh, Mike Hill and Thomas Warby on this and Steve Christmas was permanently injured at Meet This Old Surrey in Burstow and is now unable to work ever again and has just recently received £19,000 criminal injuries compensation. Unfortunately for the two dead saboteurs, no amount of compensation can bring them back. Over the years we've been ridden at, we've been driven at, we've been punched, we've been kicked, we've been spat on, we've been arrested everything that you could possibly imagine but it does not put us off it makes us more and more determined to stop it
baby dog. Sabs. We're not in a good place here. Right. We're not in a good place here. We're alright, we're Cameras! Keep moving! Move! Not many of them, not many of them. Keep calm because we don't want to leave anyone behind. What are we doing? Stay in the edge, we're going in. Sorry, I'll keep her on the back. Hey! Lead! Lead! Hey. Hang back! Look! Wait, me do. Keep moving! Oh, fuck, fuck off! Make sure you can't fuck off, are you? Jesus! Keep moving! Keep moving! Hugs down there! Come on! You're the drift passing! Watch out for that, he's gonna chuck that. Thanks, Kevin. Keep moving, fuck it.
There's plenty of video evidence. Fuck no, man, we're gonna come to the back. Everyone. Have we got everyone? So what do you think of that then? Oh, it was a... I'm glad you were here. Right, let's get in this house. This is a farm. Alright. Keep moving. 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 Yeah, yeah, I'll use your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Can we wait up on your guard? Because we can get shit kicked out. Nah, they've gone now. Big boom. Yeah, go on. Farm. Don't wind them up. No. Barricade. I was hitting, knocking quite a few of the sticks out of the way with this and and uh, yeah. and like managing to dodge him, but there's one just whizzed through just behind someone's head and just caught me there. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Stitches. No, and the dry clean, I think. <laughs> Anyone who got hurt? stronger than a bitch by pulling the meat off the bone and that and they will break down but if you look at the hound are eating the meat you imagine if that was a fox how quickly they would dispatch a fox and break them in half and eat them. People it's a myth that they chase them and it takes a long time to kill a fox but these hounds will break them and eat them within seconds and they're used to breaking into and, and breaking bones and that by how we feed them as well by using meat um, and it keeps their jaw and their strength up together. Mark Bycroft, I've been here my 19th season with the Ultra in Burstow. Then amalgamated six years ago, or five years ago, and amalgamated. Um, so now it is the Ulster in Burstow and West Kent. Um, we live in, well, 
myself, um, George and Val work the kennels and also we've got two girl grooms who look after the horses. We've got over 100 hound in the kennels um, and we've got seven horses up in the stables. I'm supposed to be this rich man who's got loads and loads of money and have loads and loads of servants. And wear a pink, pink coat and do this, that, and the other. You get Joe Public come and do this job. If you have a clue and they wouldn't be able to do it, and I don't do it for the money. I get an agricultural wage, I'll get a house for my job, and I do it for the love of hunting and my way of life, and also these hounds. There we go, hey! Especially this time of year, winter time coming warm, cold, warm, kills a lot of animals. But um, I mean, we pick up, we've got a lot of big dairy farms and sheep farms, we don't use sheep. Um, their main diet for the hounds are calf and horse. We pick a lot of horses up, and a lot of horses. Mo, 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 go on, Mo, get out, Mo, out. The vet's already rang up and he's got a horse which got put down. So we'll go and pick that up and um, then there's all the skinning and all the work, that side of it, so you're always covered in blood and crap most of the day. Alright then, um, I'm Valda. I just just about to shoot two bull calves, what basically ain't worth anything anymore. The government's basically knackered it. So the farmers has rung us up to come and shoot them for them because they're not worth feeding anymore. But you adjust if you bend your knee. I don't look at it as a job. 
I look at it as a, a way of my life, a culture. You know, culture to me is, is hunting, where everybody else, other people, other religions have their cultures. And, you know, there's a lot more cruelty in this, in this world than fox hunting. And um, in this country, I'm afraid that a lot of things are hidden out of the way and um, are allowed to carry on. Um, but without getting too personal <laughs> with other things, um, you, you know, but they never get attacked. Hunting is when you're out there, you forget about all your problems, you forget about your money problems, you forget about the groceries, you forget about the housework, you forget about the ironing. You're out there, you're witting yourself against nature, or you're working with nature. And you're doing something which is natural and which has gone on for generations after generations. And it's a traditional sport and tradition in my books goes a long way. And you ask now in this country, what is our tradition? But then again the cricket's getting better, I must admit. say that uh, fox hunting is a, an effective way of keeping foxes down? No, it's not an effective way, it's a, it's a humane way. Now, you've got to look at it as in which is a method. So if I was hunting a wood with a pack of hounds and you've got an injured fox in there, which you know as well as I, the foxes are very sly, creep about creatures. To find that fox with just walking with a gun would be pretty impossible. Say you're in three or four thousand acres of woodland and there's an injured fox there, hounds will work it out eventually and pick up the line of the fox and dispatch it very quickly. That is humane method of controlling the infirm and the old foxes. So you've got to look at it in as pet as in what is a humane way and which isn't. Yeah, and hunting takes out a small majority of foxes where uh, probably shooting at night or lamping, you can kill a lot of foxes, you know. But the other thing is that hunting, you either catch it or you don't. There's no injury to a fox. There's no injury, you know, to, to the, um, you know, it, it gets away or it doesn't. Where other methods, it's either prolonged death or it gets away and it gets injured, maybe from a snare, maybe from a from a bullet. Would you say though um, that the chase of the fox caused stress to it or not? No, I mean uh, the fox has got no natural predator apart from man. Um, you look at a fox, he will hunt at night, he'll use his wits about him, he's always looking behind him, he's always smelling downwind, he's always there, you know, he's a wild animal, and wild animals have always got that instinct of just in case somebody is following them. So the stress level is always going to be there in an animal anyway, but it's natural to them. They're always going to have that instinct that something may chase them or something's wrong.
Greenish head. What do you think of these sort of rules and things in the uh, fox hunting ban legislation against hunting with dogs? I'm not a great person sitting down looking at rule books. Um, but what they're saying is you can, which has come very clear, is you can hunt a rabbit with a pack of dogs. You can hunt a rat with a pack of dogs. But you can't hunt a mouse with a pack of dogs. I mean, whoever, whoever's done the rolling up, is done it so that hunting cannot continu continue, but still hunting vermin can, and foxes are not game, they are classed as vermin. And um, they've tied it up so much that um, you will not be able to pursue a, an animal with more than two, two dogs. But I'm still allowed to go hunting with two hounds, and pursue it and flush it, but also I can now go out with a falconer and take the whole pack of hounds out and flush any game for the falcon, or the bird of prey. Um, so whoever's, there is a lot of loopholes in the, this law, um, and I think that what will happen in the end, that it will be tested and tried in court, and um, we will be proven to <laughs> To, that it would be unpleasable and unmanageable to prove what we were doing. What about these sort of antis and saboteurs? What kind of what do you think of them? Well, no, I mean they've got their views and rights, and a demonstration or a demonstrator can demonstrate. But sometimes the demonstrator goes OTT over the top, becomes a fanatic, or comes somebody who thinks it's a game. And they start intimidating your families, or smashing your windows, or slashing your tyres, or ringing you up in the middle of the night, or leaving incendiary devices, um, putting shit through the post, razor blades, saying they've got HIV, needles. We've had, we, we, I mean, we've all experienced this for, for many years, and this is what's happened to us. But it's funny because it's, well, it's not funny. But it's a fanatic, one person who's doing it. They call themselves ALF, Animal Liberation Front. But there's no such thing as the Animal Liberation Front. They're individual fanatics who think that um, it's great fun to intimidate somebody to prevent them from prevent them from going about their lawful job. You've never been tempted to pack it all in from all the aggro? No, never. Never. But then my views on hunting and that, I'm fighting for the hounds, I'm fighting for survival, I'm fighting for my job, I'm fighting for the family, my wife's very understandable, and um, my children, I mean if they attack my children, I'm afraid I'll attack them. Um, so they know that, and you've got to send the presidents to what's going on. But I'm not going to be intimidated and bullied into something that it's totally their beliefs and I'm going to stand up for my beliefs and hunting should can continue and if it doesn't continue they've won
good day for peaceful campaigning as well. Just hope we don't get beaten up. <laughs> a lot of people would say you don't need to be here now because the law's changed and uh, hunting is now banned. The law has changed, hunting is banned, but if you listen to these people, they do seem to think it's always that they're actually above the law. They're not above the law. The law has to be enforced, and we, all, we work now alongside the police to make sure that happens. You probably don't want your whole name, but I'll ask what your first name is. That's all right. You make a name up whatever. Mum. Mom. They all call me Mum. <laughs> Tell me when, Ben. Yeah, I'm rolling. How, how does it feel t today to uh, to have got what your wish? It's taken us years of trying, but there is a but. He said he was going to ban the fox hunting. He's only banned it in a certain way, but they can still come out and do it in another way. You but at least we've got a start of it. Can I ask you a personal question? How old are you? You don't ask ladies that. <laughs> okay. Um, why choose this um, aspect of sort of animal cruelty and not perhaps like uh, farming or something? Um, I've well, as a vegan, obviously, I think that's pretty much the best I can do. Um, and with my work, um, I like to promote uh, a vegan lifestyle. Um, but obviously, farming is—you couldn't overturn the cruelties inherent in farming. Um, like you can overturn the cruelties inherent in hunting. I mean, 15 years ago when I first got involved in this campaign, it would have been ludicrous to think that this would have been banned. But here we are 15 years later, and we just cannot believe that we've come this far within a society and made it a far more civilised society. But the battle is obviously not yet over. But in terms of legality, uh, we've won, yeah. Um, how will they get into the estate? Do you reckon they'll, uh, they're actually doing some sort of big walk of stupidity up to the estate? Yeah, I mean, it's not a million miles to get onto the estate from here. Yeah, you should walk with them up front then. That's, that's, that's Stephen Fanwell. Well, we no, you didn't take a wrong turn. These guys took a wrong turn. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, we'll move so if you move your vehicle, vehicle we will get off your land, sir. Okay. It's, right, we are. Can, we're can, trying I, to are leave. You, can I ask you, are you refusing to let us leave? No, you're on private are property. Are you refusing you're, to let us leave? Sorry, you, you, as a representative, are you fully employed by the BBC or are you a freelance camera? We would like to leave the land. You don't like do. really need to do that. This bloke's just been an arsehole. Yeah. What is your name? Details of why you've been encouraging Who, these are you people a police to trespass. Officer? <laughs> 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 with, are you a police officer? Southeast News. Good. Can I ask why you refused to let us know? I refused to let us know. You did? Yeah, if you did. We got four hours. At that time, I say you can't go. You just walk over the night now. I was a navigator and I made a mistake. And are you actually going to be playing the ball? Are Oh, we were, we were watching, we were watching. 
think, what do you think of us being beaten up two weeks ago? I think it's absolutely terrible that you had an accident. No, it doesn't. Did it actually happen? I wouldn't go to your garden. I wouldn't come. We're not in your garden. You could hit me by the thing. You're on fire. I think it's absolutely garden. terrible that you guys. Face the truth. Yeah. Now, that was more like a bitch, isn't it? We, we well, I mean, fucking hell. I mean, he's never kicked off before, that guy. But he's really fucked up. Has he? He must be so incredibly stupid to attack a fucking TV. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. I can't believe that. Arrogant, it's not stupid, it's arrogant. The person's going to react like just because we've actually accidentally gone down a one way road. I don't know. Then, who, who admitted basically on film that there was an attack, um, and then we'll attack a BBC cameraman. Then, how are we safe? How how are we safe as as hunt saboteurs? You know, knowing the level of hatred that they now and and like I said all day, all they want us to do is take our masks off. They're obsessed with it. It's like they've been told, get their masks off, get photographs of them. Why you know now? Where they live. Find out where they live, where they and live. now we're in big trouble. So that's why we're wearing masks today. I'm not taking mine off. I don't know about anyone else, but you can just forget it. Look, Where do you live? Look, it's turned around. That's how easy it is. Um, it's coming down here. If you move to the side of the road, 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 I will talk to you about it there, sir. You back up. Who are you? Are you from the BBC? Can I call you back on the road, please? I'm going down there to look after my sheep, and I don't need these people who don't live oh. here coming around interrupting me, trying to get on with my lawful business. We're trying to drive down, down the road. Trying to drive road. down the road. Well, he can back up in there. This is a lot nearer. And Around the other countryside, we've, we've got nearly four vehicles. Some people, yeah, but you've got a four by four, mate. You've backed up three times <laughs> already here, and I refuse to back up anymore. Is it because these are Go and hunt I don't know who this. I don't know who. Yes. Is it because these are anti hunt I don't know who they are. By the look of it, he's a hunt saboteur. I don't know. But is that why you're refusing? To move? I'm not refusing. I'm asking him to back up. I can't so drive. I can, I can drive forward. I well, don't this drive. Is behind me. Well, we've got some behind I don't us. drive, sir. First, well, so. get your driver to back we've up. We've got then. three vehicles behind us now. Well, they can back up as well. In the countryside, people oh. normally give and take, back up. Go into, a, go into a siding and people carry on. You've got four cars that way, one car that way. What would be easier to move? The well, I'm not, I'm not backing up because the there is a gentleman behind me. What do you expect <laughs> me to do? You just flagged him to come up here. I didn't flag anybody off. Right, you okay. just have to tell okay. your driver to back up so oh, that we can go up. on. We haven't got a four by four, but we're trying, mate. Take my engine off. You can call the bobbies or call whoever you like. I'll tell you as well, I'm a local councillor and I, I know the way you people carry on here. We've got community wardens looking after you oh, people. That looks really, really muddy from what? four by four. Look at the state of that! What, what, is, what is your problem? My point is, what use is the problem? fucking thing. You mow you in the country, you've got four by four and you won't go across fields. Why are you some kind of idiot? This, this th That's not a field, it's a bloody road! Do you sure know what's right. in there? God! Just back up and so we can carry on about our lawful business. Have you finished? Well, Come on, get away from him! Oh, no, well, no, we're just going to get snarled up here. You've got community orders now. Yeah, I've got community orders. That's what he meant. Well, you think you're young offenders or something, don't you? Well, I don't know. We might as well go out. I'm right? just saying, I know. don't there keep was, telling me what to do if you're not doing it yourself. It's got a fair point. It's got a fair point. It's got a fair point. Is it really 59% say keep hunting? I don't think so, don't it? Yeah. They get their survey here. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. carry on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 How sad are you, look? <laughs> don't you fucking. Hey, know. Nigel, what's it like going out today without killing anything? Was it just as much fun? Hey? Right. On the last Saturday, that's two weeks ago. Hospital job. No, not really, mate. Right? Uh, Any flying visit? 
Lock. We've already got you lock banged to rights, you just assault with a fucking BBC cameraman. I wouldn't piss on you if he was on fire! You've got no chance with me, love. someone on the floor. Yeah, where the police at this time? They fucked right off. I couldn't see the fuck all. That's right. Do you do you enjoy coming out and uh, these days you spend? Uh, no, no, I hate it. No, I hate it. I have nightmares and it makes me feel physically sick. But you have to do it. I've started it and I'll finish it now. Just, just to see a hunted animal get away, run across the field and live to fight again another day because we have been there and intervened is a feeling that I can't express to anyone who's never seen it happen and I'll continue to do it as long as it is necessary. And you don't get uh, paid or anything? 
anything for coming out? Or <laughs> the hunt say we do, but if we do, then I'm owed a lot in back pay over the last 10 to 15 years. But no, I've never received a penny. Um, do you mind if I ask what type of job you do for a living? I'm actually a company director. <laughs> My name's David Mills. I uh, I run this place. I owned it. Um, I developed it here ten years ago. Um, prior to that, it was my dairy farm. So I've, been, I've lived here for 30 years. So um, sold the cows in '94 and turned it into this uh, wildlife centre. This is Honey. She is uh, now seven years old. And uh, she was given to me, well three of them, three cubs were brought to me by uh, the local hunt, like Mark Bycroft, he, um, the huntsman. And they were, just had their eyes open, so they were probably about four weeks old when they came here. Um, and Honey is the surviving one. Um, the others did survive, all three survived. Um, Ellie, the third one, unfortunately got out and was killed on the road and uh, Pickles, her sister, um, died two years ago from um, uh, when she was giving birth to her cubs. She retained her afterbirth and I'm afraid you know, she got septicemia but uh, Honey is the surviving one and she's uh, doing very well as you can see. Hunting within the law. Big sort of legislation of um, what people are saying about. Um, we um, cold marked the place. Um, we were within our legal right to dig the fox out. Um, the fox was um, mangy, moving, full of mange. Um, dug it out. But we have to hunt within the law. Um, and we're going to send a clear message to people that we are going to hunt within the law. Um, and hopefully this, but the thing is within the legislation now, that the law will become unforceable, unworkable, and that it will be proven in court that we will win in the end. And I think we will. And it will only take six months, seven months, eight months but I'm afraid it is an unworkable law um, and to get rid of something which has taken generations to perfect and to control and just to kill it overnight is totally wrong. So you don't think it's the end of hunting? Oh no, not by a long, 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 long way. 